Hi, my name is Adam. Welcome to the channel. Thanks for joining us today. Today we're going to go through four questions you need to have answered before you get to retirement. Okay. Um, these are ideally questions that you answer five to 10 years before retirement. But if you're a day away or maybe a day into or, or a little bit more than that into retirement and you don't have the answers, you need to take a step back and get the answers to these four questions. They're very important and they're what's going to structure your overall retirement portfolio. Near the end of this video, we're gonna go through some options on how to get these questions answered. Obviously in this video, we're gonna highlight four questions you need to make sure you get the answer to. We're also gonna cover off later in the video how to get these answered, some different options for you, um, you know, DIY options or professional options. So we'll give you those at the end of the video as well. So question number one is how much income can be generated on a sustainable basis? So when we dig into that question, we're looking at a couple things. Okay, your overall portfolio right now, between your investments, maybe a pension plan, your CPP, your OAS, what can be generated out of there? Okay, so it might be dividends, it might be interest income, um, it might be just an ongoing RIF payment that you have out of there, but how much can be generated consistently out of there, okay? This is why I really like a dividend paying portfolio uh, leading up and into retirement. I like it way before, I personally have most of my money in a dividend paying portfolio, um, but a dividend paying portfolio will be nice because you can actually you know, have a consistent cash flow stream coming out of your portfolio, okay? So let's say you have you know, $500,000 and it's, your portfolio is generating 4% a year in dividends, you're getting $20,000 of cash flow just from that dividends already, okay? So you had your 20,000, you had on your CPP, your OAS, maybe you have a bit of a pension plan. You can see how much income you have coming in, kind of automatic before you have to start drawing on any capital of any investments you have. So that's step one is just look at your overall portfolio, your structure, your income sources, and see how much automated income can start generating out of that. Now the second part of that is you know preservation of capital. So for most of you watching these videos and most Canadians in general, you need to start deploying capital in retirement, which means that you're not just taking the dividends and the interest payments out of your investment account, you're also drawing down on principal. Okay, so you need to figure out how much you can draw down to make sure that it lasts long enough, obviously. So you need to start doing some calculations to figure out, okay, if I hit retirement next year, um, you know, looking at OAS, CPP, pension, any kind of income sources, rental income, you know, how long will my money last? But how much can I pull out of that portfolio? Okay, so again, if your dividends paying out of there are 20,000 and you need 30,000, then okay, we're, we're dipping into the capital $10,000 every year. How much longer is that going to last? Okay, now I'm not going through calculations here. I'm just going through concepts. Okay, this is a question you need to have answered before you hit retirement. Okay, how much money can you pull out of your account on an ongoing sustainable basis? So again, question number one is, how much income can you pull out of your accounts? Now, number two is, how long does that money need to last? Okay, so there's kind of two parts to this one too. How long does it need to last and how long can it last? Okay, so let's look at how long does it need to last? Now, obviously nobody knows um, <laughs> when we're gonna pass away, okay? I know there's that movie out there, you have the timestamp on your wrist, it tells you when you're gonna pass away, how many hours or minutes you have left. Obviously none of us have that. So it's a bit of a, you know, a guessing game, an assumption game, uh, when we put together a financial plan, when you start rolling out your numbers. So, you know, you can work on life expectancy, depending on what age you are right now, what kind of health you're in, all that kind of stuff. But I usually look at kind of the 85 to 87 number, okay? So that's kind of life expectancy in Canada for most of you watching these videos. So you need to make sure that your income can at least last till that point, okay? Sure, you might pass away early, there might be a bit of money, but if you live past that age, what happens to you, okay? So, you know, a lot of you watching this will say, okay, well, if I hit 88, 89 into my 90s, I'm not spending my, much money, which is absolutely true. So, if you have your CPP and your old age security and you add that up and maybe that's enough to get you by in your 90s, then you can spend all your money by 87. But you need to kind of take a step back, look at longevity in your family, look at your current health situation, look at a bunch of factors that will tie into this and see, okay, you know, I'm kind of the average person for myself. You know, I'm gonna to plan to live till age 86, 87, okay? Um, now I'm going to plan my income till 95. I wanna make sure I have enough income, you know, to support me if I do pass that age. But, you know, take a step back, look at the assets you have, and make sure that it can actually last the life expectancy, okay? So question number one is how much money can I pull out? Question number two is how long it'll last? 
those two questions need to kind of fit together in a puzzle piece, okay? Figure out each one individually and then see how they come together. And that's how we do our, our financial plans, okay? We see how much assets there are, how much income can generate, okay? And then we take life expectancy and then we kind of merge those together. And how do we, how do we tax strategize around both of those questions to come together to create a clear, concise plan for you? Okay, so now that you know how much income you can draw out of your portfolio, it matches how long you're going to live. Now you need to figure out, like, is that enough money to pay your ongoing expenses, your living expenses, increasing expenses, cover inflation, all that kind of stuff, okay? So again, how much money you have, how long you live, does it actually match what you need to have, okay? And this is where it's important to make sure you run these numbers five to 10 years le leading up to retirement because once you get into retirement, if you realize that I'm going to be short on money, you, you may need to work part time, you may need to work another year or two in your job, you have time to kind of adjust and increase that number so that that puzzle piece comes together a bit better. Okay. So if you, you know, put those two numbers together, and it doesn't come out with enough money, then we need to do different things. Either we need to adjust the budget, maybe downsize the house. Okay, so these are different options that people use to you know, help get to a better retirement position, okay? We see a lot of people say, look, I don't have enough money to get me to 87, but if I downsize my principal residence, you know, in my early 80s or late 70s, it gives me a big cash injection that will allow me to live, you know, get the cash flow I need to life expectancy or maybe a bit beyond, okay? So that's one strategy we see a lot of people use, okay? So downsizing the house, they're not gonna want the house later in life, um, and then, you know, if they hit 90s, they need to go to care home, they sell their condo or townhome and use that money to pay for care. OK, so there's just some options there. Um, some of you need to work another year or two. OK, some of you, when you run these numbers, may realize and we run into this a lot. You may realize that you have too much money. OK, and you may be able to retire a year or two earlier, which is obviously a great thing. We presented plans to many of you and I love watching your faces as you see that, hey, I can actually retire a year, two, three years earlier than I had expected. OK, so again, some of you may be on one side of the fence, some of you on the other side of the fence. But the important part is to run your numbers so that you know what side of the fence or if you're on the fence. OK, so again, you may need to work longer. Another good option, and I really encourage this for a lot of you is as you enter into retirement, have a part time job. OK, so, um, you know, if you're a teacher, for instance, okay, you're working full time, you're teaching, you know, maybe you retire, but you go back, substitute, you know, once a week, twice a week, whatever it is, and get a little bit of that income. Once you run that income, maybe you can do that for two or three years, you know, add in another $20,000 a year of part time, you know, income substituting, that's going to help your overall income and cash flow plan tremendously, okay? So a part time job, work a bit longer, downsize the house. And some of you, and never rely on this, but a lot of you will get a bit of an inheritance, 50, 100, 200, 500,000, whatever that is. You know, you can budget that in, but it's gotta be guaranteed. I never like to plan with inheritance, but I know a lot of you do. Um, so if you know there's, hey, I know there's $100,000 coming, you know, it probably will come to me in the, you know, 70, 75 range based on my parents' age. You know, sure, you could add that into the plan, but I wouldn't rely on that because your parents or whoever's giving you that money could spend it before it comes to you. So just be aware of that. And the fourth and last question you need to make sure you can answer is under adverse conditions, is your money going to last long enough? Is there going to be enough income? Now, an adverse uh, you know, condition or, or issue could be you know, a stock market crash. It could be a health issue. It could be a loved one passing away. Um, it could be so many things. So let me just highlight a few that we see um, to be prepared for. Okay, So if you're someone watching this video that's not at retirement yet, you might be a year, five years, 10 years, or even more away from retirement. One thing you wanna make sure is you have life insurance in place on yourself and your loved one. Anyone that you know is important in your world, especially if you have debt or if you're saving for retirement. Those are the two trigger points. A lot of people say, oh, I'm debt free. I don't need life insurance anymore. The reality is, is that probably once you're debt free, you're taking a lot of that cash flow and putting it into re your retirement plan. And that's what's really building up your retirement plan. Okay. So what happens? Let's say husband and wife. Okay. Let's say they're both working, making 60 grand a year and putting a fair amount of money into RSPs, TFSAs, retirement income. Okay. What happens if one passes away? That income's gone. Okay. Now you may not be able to save at all or very little for retirement. Your retirement may be delayed. 
So be aware of that. So buy life insurance. Look at how much you think you're going to save from now to retirement. Buy some life insurance. So if something happens to one of you, there's a cash injection into your retirement plan to make sure that you can still retire on time with enough money and that your retirement isn't totally derailed. And I know if you love, if you lose your spouse, your retirement's going to be derailed a little bit, obviously. But you know, if we can protect that financially with you know a few dollars a day, essentially, make sure you take a look at that. Now, the second way people get derailed on their financial plan leading up to an into retirement is, you know, having one or two or, or small basket of stocks that, you know, maybe did very well for them. We talked to a lot of you that hold one or two or three stocks in your portfolio and it's seven figure portfolio. Now, I know a lot of you have a lot of trust in some of these companies. I won't name them Tesla, but I need to make sure that, you know, if Tesla goes, you know, in half or at 25 percent or Shopify or some of these companies that have done phenomenally well and could do phenomenally well going forward. We have no idea how these companies are going to do, but you need to make sure that you start kind of leveling out the risk in your portfolio. And we did a video last week on this, right? Like as you get closer to retirement, you need to evaluate your portfolio, your positions, and, and see if you can kind of de-risk. If you de-risk, you know, take that risk off the table or a lot of it, can you still meet your retirement goals? Okay. So one of the big factors that will derail retirement is you know, not having proper asset allocation in your portfolio, you know, things going sideways in the market or in the company that you own, and you're in a whole lot of hurt, okay? So make sure that your portfolio is structured properly leading up to and through retirement. Now, the third adverse condition that we see once in a while, and we don't see it a whole lot, but it happens, we know that, is health issues, okay? And this is, this is kind of twofold as well. I know I've said that a few times in this video, but you know, the first part of this is you have a health issue. There's an expensive medication that's maybe not covered under provincial or, or your personal health plans. There's a large expense that's out of pocket. Okay. So that's kind of step one. Again, we don't see it a whole lot, but obviously it happens. Some of you watching this video, you know, it might fall into that category. Okay. The second part of this is, you know, a health issue later in life. Okay. It might be, you know, late sixties, seventies, whatever. And this is where I think it's so important when you retire, if you're healthy, if you can travel, if you can do the things that you hope to do in retirement to really have that go-go phase, right? Make sure you know how much money you can spend without costing your future retirement and start traveling and spending money. Now, I know COVID is you know hurting that big time. It's hard to travel, but when you know the world opens up again, make sure that you start using some of those funds that you've allocated for travel that you know you can spend start spending that. So if you do have one of these adverse conditions, i.e. health down the road, you've taken advantage of your good health early on and you've enjoyed that part of retirement. So how do you crunch these numbers? How do you answer these questions? I think a few things. So on the first two questions, which is really the numbers and how that puzzle piece comes together, um, you know, sometimes, you know, if you're working with a financial planner, if you're paying someone, um, it could be at your bank, you know, a financial institution locally where you live. If you're paying someone to have your money managed, you're also more than likely paying, you know, a financial planning fee or, or an advising fee. Okay. That fee is up to 1%. For most of you, you're paying 1% for advising and then maybe 1% or roughly that for the investments. Okay. So there's two parts to your fee for most of you watching this. Okay. DIY investors, I'll cover you in a second. But for a lot of you, if you're at a financial institution, if you're in mutual funds or something like that, you're paying a fee that kind of covers two parts. Okay. One is the investment management. One is the financial planning or advice, okay? Most of you are not getting this at all, okay? I talked to many of you, you know, you're paying this, you're not getting it, okay? So one option is you can go into your financial institution, your bank, wherever, whoever you deal with and say, look, like, I know I'm paying you, you know, if you have, let's say, a $300,000 account, you're paying your advisor $3,000 a year, most likely, to provide financial planning to you, okay? They're, you know, the investment firm they're with also gets 1% for the investing side. So if you're person say, no, no, I do the investing. It's like, okay, but I, I pay that over here. Like I still pay the 1% planning fee. Who's providing that? Okay. So go in, talk to them. They should be able to put a plan together for you. Okay. Um, best of luck with that. A lot of them don't do planning. They charge you the overall fee, but only do part of it. So be aware of that, but go in, talk to your bank, financial planner, whoever you deal with, you know, a lot of people out there uh, will put the plan together for you. They'll crunch those numbers. They'll put it together. They'll give you a basic idea on where you're at. Okay. So that's option number one. Option number two is more DIY. So, you know, if you're a DIY investor, maybe you want to go the DIY kind of planning route, get an Excel spreadsheet, 
Um, if you're not good with Excel and numbers, you could hire someone on a program called Fiverr um, or just Google search. There, there's people that you can hire to put like an Excel spreadsheet together for you. Again, it's more basic, but it's gonna run the numbers, give you a general idea where you're at, what you're on track for. Another option on the DIY side might be to, you know, wherever you bank, they might have an online program. A lot of them just have a budgeting program, but some of them have a basic financial planning. Um, you can also go to, uh, we'll leave the link below for Canada.ca. So um, the Canadian government does have a retirement planning kind of online calculator that you can use. So we'll link that below as well. Um, it's not <laughs> tremendously easy to follow through, but I did do it just yesterday, just tried it out. It took me about five or 10 minutes to put in my information. It gave me a number, it's pretty high level, but again, if you wanna just see, you know, do I have enough, am I kinda of on track, it's going to give you that. And the last option, I think the best option, but there's more of a cost to it, is to hire a financial planner, okay? So hire a certified financial planner to dive deep into your financial plan. And for any of you watching this video that have hired us, thank you. We've worked with a lot of you over the last few months in creating financial plans for you guys. And, and every plan we've delivered, we've gotten such tremendous feedback from you, but hire a financial plan. Um, we'll leave our link below. It's parallelwealth.com slash FFS, fee for service. We offer fee for service financial plans. Okay, we charge $3,500, taxes included, and that gives you a comprehensive financial plan. So we take all of your numbers, we take your goals and objectives and income needs and all that in retirement, we merge it together and create a bunch of scenarios and then bring it back to you with the best two to five. Okay, so that's kind of the model that we use. We go through it over Zoom, go through all the detail, fine tune it back and forth, and then give you your plan so that you can follow it. It's gonna show you exactly you know, where income could come from, how much you're gonna get, how long it's gonna last, how much tax you're gonna pay, all that kind of stuff. So we go deep into it. Now, obviously there's a bit more cost to that than just creating an Excel spreadsheet, but it's much more in depth. So if you're getting close to retirement, you feel like I have no idea what's happening in my world, I don't know if I can retire. Um, again, we'll leave the link for our services below. There may be a financial planner in your area or someone that you know. You know, it's worth it probably for you to hire someone, run those numbers for you, make sure you're on track. And again, a, a certified financial planner will not just run the numbers for you, but they'll be able, to be able to create strategy, save you in taxes, increase your income. So on average for the, the plans that we put together, we're saving clients between Fifty and two hundred fifty thousand dollars on average. Okay, some are higher. We've saved one six hundred eighty thousand dollars in additional tax savings and income stream. So there, there's massive strategies that we can use. Again, that's not just our office. That's financial planners, you know, across the country. You know, find a good one, interview a few, find one that fits for you is right for you. Um, again, our office, we can work with anyone right across Canada or even abroad if you're a Canadian. So um, if you're in Ontario or Manitoba or Quebec or wherever, we can work with you, reach out to our office, but find someone, find a professional to put a plan together for you to just give you that peace of mind that you're on track for retirement so that when you hit retirement, you know where your money's coming from, how much you can get, how long it'll last, you know, if there's any adverse conditions that you can kind of hit those speed bumps with ease and care and, and just make sure that you're on track for retirement. So um, there's some resources for you. Again, whatever route you go, just make sure that you have these puzzle pieces fitting together and that you have a clear plan for retirement. So thanks for joining us in this video. Again, make sure you have these four questions answered before you hit retirement. If you're already in retirement, make sure you have them answered as well. If you don't take a step back, get the answers to these questions. I promise you, your retirement will be much more pleasant if you have these questions answered for retirement. So thanks for joining us in this video. We'll see you in the next one.